Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to go over the silent uh, My64 or MyVic20 build. And when I mean silent, I mean there's no moving parts within the build. It's super silent, um, but it will run Windows. Uh, it's much, uh, it's, it's, it's several times faster than a Raspberry Pi, but it's not going to be good enough for doing AAA games. You'll be able to run emulation games and you'll be able to do day-to-day things on uh, a Windows computer. That's that's the build that we're going to do today. So for it for day-to-day -day things it's going to be absolutely fine. So what, are, what do we need for this build? We're going to need, for this instance we're using the MyVic20 case. So this is a retro PC case. Uh, you can use the My64 but for this particular build we're using the MyVic20. We're going to need a Piku power supply. Uh, so this is a Piku uh, PSU 90 watt. So that's what we're using for this, a 90 watt Piku power supply. Uh, we also need a laptop brick that's obviously powerful, you know, it needs to be as powerful enough to power the uh, Piku power. So this is 120 watt, but obviously that's ample for the Piku power supply. We're going to need a kettle lead to power the power supply. And that's the power side things uh, sorted out. Then we're going to need a SATA cable for a slimline optical drive. So this is so that we can actually um, plug in the hard drive uh, in this build. Speaking of the hard drive, uh, we need a... Uh, a two and a half inch hard drive. Now you can go mechanical, with, they're cheaper, but they're not as fast. So you can go to mechanical, and because they're cheaper, you could probably put a one terabyte or two terabyte in. It's entirely up to you. But we're using, in this build, we're using a, uh, a solid state two and a half inch hard drive. And this is only, um, uh, what have we got here? Uh, a 250 gigabyte. But again, you don't have to do that. You can use a mechanical hard drive and you can go up to two terabytes, so it's entirely up to you. But that's what we're doing in this build. Uh, we need two sticks of sodium memory. Now, these are uh, sticks I had around to save money. I didn't have to go and buy new ones, but I recommend two four gigabyte sticks. What have we got in here? Ah, you need a, uh, a Wi-Fi card with the two cables. Again, that will be in the description. So you get the card, which is so big. You get two aerial wires that have actually got to be uh, clipped into the card and then the actual other end has got thread on it ready for the uh, antenna to screw to. And then the last thing we need is the J5040 um, mini ITX motherboard. So I'm just going to get this out and show it to you quick because uh, these are really really good motherboards. They're, they're good because they're what's known as embedded and that means that the CPU is already uh, in, incorporated into the motherboard. It's part of the motherboard. It's not plugged into the motherboard. It's actually part of the motherboard. So if I show you this close up, you can actually see that that is where the chip is, and that's a heat sink, so we don't need a fan on there. But the good thing about this board and this build is the fact that you don't have to install the CPU, you don't have to install a fan or a heat sink, it's already done for you. So, that's going to make this build infinitely quicker to do because one of the hardest parts of it is already done. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to the bench and I'll show you how to assemble this and fit it into the MyVic20. Okay, so before we actually um, start installing the motherboard into the case, I thought it worth going over the rear I.O. shield. So here we have the rear I.O. shield and um, you'll notice that there's three holes here. They were filled with uh, inserts that you just... Uh, snap out and I've snapped all three out 
Um, these are for aerial wires, so on some systems you'll, uh, you'll have three aerial wires, but on our particular system we've only got two aerial wires, so that leaves us one of these free. Uh, so I thought that would be a great opportunity to put the PICU power supply into the back and that will enable us, enable us not to need the three and a half inch vent plate because there's no need for the vent plate on this particular build because no additional cooling is needed. Um, and if you use the vent plate, it's got a hole in it for the PICU power so you can put it on the side. Uh, so if we do it this way around, we can keep the card reader in place. Uh, and I thought it, it, and I, you know, it'd be a great time to show you how to do that. So what you're gonna need for this is an eight mil steel drill piece and uh, a drill, an actual drill to drill it. Uh, and what I've got here is a two inch by one inch piece of wood, softwood. Um, and I'm going to um, drill it from the outside of the IO shield. I'm going to put the I'm going to put the IO shield over the top of the wood, and I'm going to decide which which one of these three I'm going to drill it into. So if I put it around the right way, so as you're looking down on this, I'm going to do it on the hole that's furthest away from the uh, audio input. So I'm going to do it on this hole here. So that's what we're going to do. I'm just going to insert this into my drill um, we've got to be careful we don't want to push too hard because again the holes already there and it might snag so we just want to go slowly there we go it's picked up on the hole and it's drilled the hole now <coughs> sometimes you might have a little bit of a burr but um, let's see if we can drill it again Um, and we've got a little bit of a burr there so sometimes you might need to get a little pair of pliers and snap the burr off you can do it with your fingers but you've got to be careful you don't stab yourself with it it'd be like a splinter, a metal splinter and we don't like metal splinters ok that has come off so let me move that sawdust out of the way put that over there so now we have uh, three holes, we've got two holes for the aerial and we've got one larger hole for the PICU power. So now we can actually go on to the next uh, part of it and install it into the case. Okay, there's a couple of tools I forgot about that I should have mentioned uh, and that is you're going to need a pair of uh, side snips or scissors and that is to cut cable ties. You're also going to need uh, a Phillips screwdriver. I've got two different sizes just in case. And this is optional. I advise to do it. I've got a, um, a wrist strap for so in case of static di discharge. I'm going to plug this into the, uh, into the power socket. Don't worry, there's no power. The only reason I'm plugging it in is if you can see this, for instance, it's only got the UF plug doing anything. The live and neutral, I think this is a UK plug, but the live and neutral are just plastic, they're blanked out. So I'm not getting any power from this. It's basically to UF myself, so I don't create any static discharge onto the motherboard. There's so many people that don't do this, so I haven't, I've, I've known a couple of instances where static discharge could have damaged the motherboard, but there was no proof. Um, but um, for purposes of this video, uh, I don't want to tell you guys not to do it and then um, you damage your, your motherboard. So I advise to do it. I'm, going to, I'm just going to put this on in a sec, but there's no need to do it just yet. Uh, the first thing that we're going to do is uh, do the Wi-Fi card. And the reason I'm doing that is because, believe it or not, on this build, this is the hardest thing to do. Right, and the reason for that is these. If I get the Wi-Fi card out, um, this Wi-Fi card has got two. If I get my screwdriver, which is also a pointing device, and I'll bring this up here, we've got two little um, posts. One, one there, and one there. Right, and these 
antenna. Why they've come out with this idea, I don't know. Uh, it's got a, a, a sort of like a metal end to it that plugs onto those posts, and it's it's not straightforward. It's not like you just offer it up and push on it and it clicks. It takes a, it takes five minutes to get it to go in, and you've got to you've got to get it right. So that's the job we're going to do. The other thing I'm going to explain before we go any further is after we've click these into place then we're going to start working on the motherboard and the best way to work on the motherboard is on its own box because the motherboard has got all circuitry underneath and it's got sharp bits of solder and if you work on say your um, dining room table you're going to scratch the table by all means you can put something on the table and work off it but I find it easy just to work straight off the box it comes in um, so that's the main reason behind that. But so what we're going to do now is we're going to locate. Uh, this has got a socket on it, so you've got to. Um, if I can get it around the right way, so you can actually see it close up. You've got to have it so that you can see the socket, and then you've got the post on here. And I've got to locate that. Get it around the right way. So the socket is over the top of the post and then push on it and click it in. Sometimes it goes in straight away, other times it takes a lot of effort to get it to go in. It's an, it, this is a horrible job, but after this is done, it's plain sailing. Now it's gone in, but I didn't hear a click, but there you go. I'll take a close up picture of this once they're in. So you can actually see how the, the positions they're in once they've clicked into place. So that's one done. Uh, let's have a go, go at this one. And that definitely clicked. Now once they're in place they actually they can move. So if what you can see them moving around. So maybe that will suffice for the picture. You can see them there. So that's that job done. And now we're going to move on to the motherboard. Right then, so the first thing we're going to do is fit the Wi-Fi card that we just built and just pl plugged in. So the Wi-Fi card, if I bring this up to the screen so you can actually see it, um, is uh, again it's got cutouts on the uh, bit that plugs into the socket on the motherboard meaning you can only put it in one way and the rule of thumb on this is is make sure that the printout with all the information is facing up so that you can actually see it so the m.2 wi-fi connection is here on the motherboard so we're just going to offer that up i've got it at a slight angle raised and again i'm going to use a rocking motion to and fro until it clicks into place so it doesn't take much it's hardly any motion at all to push that in so that's pushed in now and now I can actually push it down to actually fit the screw in um, but the screw is here by the way you can see I've got my wrist strap on because I'm working with the motherboard so the next thing we have to get this zip bag and carefully take this screw out half the time I've dropped these screws on the floor and I've got to fumble around and find them but um, I've got it. Uh, the other good thing here is this screwdriver is magnetic, meaning the screw stays attached to the bottom of the screwdriver, which is really handy for a job like this. So I'm going to push down the uh, Wi Fi card and then line the screw up with the motherboard um, thread and then just pinch it. It's only just ever so slightly pinched. The, these threads are very fine, and the one thing you don't want to do is over tighten it because you could strip the threads and then the screw will just spin around and round and round and you've basically ruined your motherboard. Um, so that's that side of things done. The next thing we want to do is put the RAM in. So what we want to do is it, we've got these um, locking tabs here. Uh, so they're in the closed position there if we click them to closed. Uh, we want to open them up. So did you hear that click? I'll do it again. So we want to put them into the open position uh, and then again, on these uh, sodiums, uh, there's a there's an actual uh, break in the line. If you can actually see it, do it like that. Uh, and that is offset. 
and that helps us locate, uh, make, make it, it basically helps us uh, put it round the right way because the ram only goes round one way. So if you have, if you actually have a look at the socket, you can see it's got a, a, a joiner um, that's offset. And that corresponds with this, the cutout here. So we can only put it in one way. So the best way to put this in is rest it into position, then lift the board up so you've got um, a grab of the bottom of the board, and then just in a in a rocking motion, um, just force the um, ram downwards, rocking it side to side until it locks into place. And that clicking motion you just heard was the locking tabs coming up into the closed position. So again, we want to line this up with the slit and we can see I've got the ram around the wrong way. So I'll turn the ram around the right way and you can see that lines up. I'm going to put this in. Again, I'm going to lift it up and just use leverage to click this into position. There we go. Again, they, the locking tabs have lifted up into the closed position. Just double check and make sure they are closed. So that's the RAM installed. There's only one more thing to install on this. Uh, and then we can actually fit this motherboard into the case. So we have the Piku power supply. So because this is a, uh, a low wattage uh, version of the Piku power, it's only 90 watts. It isn't very big. Some of the uh, the bigger ones, the, the biggest we can put in our my Vic 20 case or my 64 case is 150 watt. Uh, but because this one is uh, 90 watt, it's smaller and it's not as long. We haven't got the full length on the ITX power socket. Again, this can only go in one way round, uh, and you can see a locking tab there. Um, and that corresponds to a little lip we have on this side. So when you put this into place, you want to have it to the left as far as it goes onto the socket. And you want to make sure that the cables are facing out towards you. And again, uh, we want to lift the motherboard up so we've got a leverage. And we just want to rock it side to side until it clicks into place. Let's see if we can hear that click. Very, very, very um, just about heard that. But that's clicked into place. The tab is uh, locked on the on the uh, little ledge, so we know that's into place. So believe it or not, what we've just done is built a PC. Everything here, uh, everything you see here is we're 90% of the way there. The only thing missing to actually turn this on and run it is the uh, hard drive so everything's there so the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to install this in to the myvic 20 case okay so i've got my wrist strap back on uh, and what we're going to do now is we're going to offer this uh, io shield and we're going to slide it into position making sure that the bottom lip on the io shield slots into the bottom lip I'll move the motherboard out of the way you can see a bottom lip all the way along there a cut out uh, and that enables you to slide this down into, into position and just make sure it's on the bottom right and then we can lower the motherboard down into position <coughs> and if you note we've got a rocking motion here so that means that we need to push this motherboard up to the I.O. shield just as we're going to tighten the screws up. So if we open our motherboard um, screws up from this zip bag, get our screwdriver, this one will be better, and then what we want to do is only put the screws in um, just so that they're just starting to Bite into the plastic. We don't want to tighten them up yet because um, we've still got to push the motherboard into position. It's always best when you're ever, when, whenever you're going to screw something together, fit all the screws in first, then tighten them up afterwards. That way, um, you're never going to run into a position where one of the screws won't fit in the hole because the hole's not quite in the right position. So they're all in place, and we're going to push that forward 
and I'm going to tighten one of these up. Again, it's only just pinch tight. We don't, know, we don't want to over tighten it and damage the motherboard. All the time I'm doing this, I'm putting a little bit of motion to push it that way, so it's pushing against the IO shield. Okay, so that's in position now, so that's great. The next thing we're going to do is fit the um, antennae. So what we're going to do is take the nut off and the washer. I've been in two minds how to do this, but I think it's best to have the washer on the outside and then the nut can do up onto the washer and then the washer can help bite it all into position and stop it from spinning around when you screw the antennae on. That's the general idea. And we're trying to, we're spinning these round to try and get them in a position where they're not in the way of anything. Not that it really matters on this build because, like I said before, we have no moving parts, which is a great position to be in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is leave the tightening up of these until we've got the um, the power output from the Piku power supply in position, and then we'll tighten all those up. So the next thing I want to do is the Piku power supply. So what we're going to do is remove the nut and the washer, and then feed this underneath all these and then put this into position it should fit in then quite nicely now and again one of the good things about this is we haven't got any moving parts to snag wires because normally that would be a little bit of a problem and then we do that up Now, unfortunately, I haven't got a pair of long nose pliers, but I have got a pair of long nose mole grips. So, although this is, I highly, I highly um, recommend you use the long nose pliers for this, I haven't got any to hand, so I'm going to use these. So, again, we're just going to, we're not tight, we're, I'm not putting lots of pressure on it, I'm just put enough pressure on it to grab hold of the nut to spin it around and all we want to do is just pinch it again like the screws we don't want to do it too much just a pinch that's pinched and then we want to try and do that to these antennae it's quite a fiddly little job this I'd normally be doing this flat but I'm trying to do it so you can see what I'm doing. That's as tight as they're going to get. Okay, so that's another job well done. We haven't got much to do, which is great. This wire here with these four pins on uh, is not needed for this particular motherboard. On some motherboards you need it, uh, on this particular one we don't, so I'm actually going to ease that off and remove it because it's one less cable to worry about. These cables are what will go, these are the power cables to the SATA, so we'll leave them down there for now. The next thing we're going to do is connect the card reader. So we have to find the power, uh, the um, USB so, there it is right so there it is so we've got USB 3 here and then we've got a single USB 2 just above it there and then we've got a double USB 2 here this is the one we're going to connect card reader to so what we want to do is get this around the right way so um, the no pin position uh, when I say no pin position I mean there isn't there isn't a on the actual socket here 
there isn't a pin in that position there you can just about make it out that's called the no pin position and that has got to correspond with the no pin position on the actual pin outs here because otherwise if you get it around the wrong way one uh, you could blow up the card reader and two you'll bend the pin because you'll be putting the, the no pin position onto a pin and bend it so we'll put this around this way and we'll slot that into place Now what we need to do here is what I call cable tidiness. So we've got to figure a way where the cables aren't really touching this heat sink because the heat sink's quite hot and we don't want anything if we can help it touching it too much. Um, so I'm trying to figure a way. You can see I haven't done this before because if I'd have done it before I'd know exactly where I'm putting the cables. In fact, I think the best thing to do with this, unfortunately these cables, because they've been in this position so long, they don't want to move. So it's pretty difficult to straighten them. But what I find is the easiest way is put your, your finger there and your thumb there and pull it towards you a few times because you're putting friction and you're heating it up and that can loosen the cable and make it more pliable as to where you want to put it. Um, you can see that's a lot more pliable now. Um, so we're going to put this around here and then we're going to check the no pin position again and we know it's in the no pin position there so we're going to push that into place. Again, you can see that on the actual uh, instructions that you get in with the case to show you where that no pin position goes. So the next thing we're going to do is connect, or we're actually going to fit one of the cable mounts and cable ties in. The, for the most part, you, we don't really need that many on this build. We'll probably need a few on the top half of the case. Um, for the keyboard wiring but what the first thing you do with these panel mounts is peel the back off but then put the cable tie through making sure you're putting the cable tie through the right way round ready for zipping up and then what we're going to do is we're going to put it between these two vents but with the cable um, tie through it means it's easy you know, we'd never be able to thread it through otherwise so we want to put this this mount, cable tie mount, and try and keep it square in between those two positions and then we can put these wires there and it's all about um, cable management, keeping the build nice and tidy. Even though we haven't got any moving parts, the last thing we want is wires floating around everywhere in the way. And then we want to snip that off because that's done. So that's finished and out of the way. <coughs> the next thing we're going to do is uh, fit our hard drive. Now I just want to let you know that you can fit, you can remove this hard drive cradle that we've got here that looks like an optical drive, a DVD drive, slimline DVD drive that would fit in a laptop. Um, this is a laptop DVD drive I have here. Uh, so you could remove this and you could fit a laptop um, DVD drive in, in as opposed to uh, this cradle that holds a hard drive because there's fixing points underneath on the actual metal cradle uh, there's fixing points for a hard drive to go underneath so it, it can take a laptop uh, DVD drive and a hard drive as well underneath uh, but for this particular build, I'm not going to do that. I don't see the point in uh, optical drives anymore, even though some people will want an optical drive. Uh, they're obsolete now, really. Everyone uses um, uh, USB drives, thumb drives, uh, as opposed to that. So it's far easier on this build to install a hard drive. And what you do, no matter whether it's a mechanical or a... Um, a solid state as this is as long as it's SATA based you can just push this into position now you can remove this and fix this so slot it in and actually screw it down you've got the screws in the kit here 
Um, but I tend to just put this in, leave it at, a, at like a 30 degree angle, and then rock it side to side to slot it into position, and then just let it drop down. I find that's that's adequate, that's fine. So what we need now is our SATA slimline optical drive uh, cable. And we need to open this up. This cable's quite long, so uh, again, it's going to need a, a, a bit of cable management. So, what we need to do first is plug this in to the um, optical drive, and it only goes in one way. So line line them up and plug it in the only way it goes, and then we need to. Put this <coughs> SATA cable. Again, we can <coughs> we can do the same thing and work this along the, along it like this, um, putting friction in to warm it up so it becomes pliable. Because otherwise, it wants to do what it wants to do. If you know what I mean, it's you've got to show it who's boss. So I'm going to tuck that underneath the hard drive cradle. Again, these only go one way. So, and it's that way, so I'm going to plug that into this position here, this SATA position. And then this <coughs> is the um, Molex power plug, and that plugs into here. It only goes one way, but basically all you've got to do is line the wires up. So we've got red this side, red that side, you know it's going to go in right, and plug that in. And then the next thing we have to do is find a position for this to go in so it's not in the way. So I think that's a good position over here. It's not in the way of anything. So we could have it there like that. So in order for that to work we need another cable zip tie, cable tie and a cable tie mount. So one more. Again, we peel it first. Repeal, take off the, the green backing, put a cable tie in, and then work out the position where it's going to go. So I'd say around about there. And then we can get the wires in the right position. So we're not clamping the actual Molex plug itself, we're just clamping down the wires that are coming out of it and thereby it will clamp the Molex plug down for us. We could, if you wanted to, you could buy some double sided tape and actually tape the Molex plug down, that would be another option. I think that's fine like that. Again, you know, feel it yourself, think, feel a way around where you think that's a better place to put it. So I'm trying to get rid of this um, unused SATA power block that's out the way. So we can put that round like that. Um, okay, again, we, can, we need to snip that. So let's recap what we've done. This is a full working computer now. It's got everything there. We've got a hard drive. Um, we've got the RAM. We've got the Piku power. Um, and we've got Wi-Fi. It's all uh, connected. We've got a card reader connected. There's only two things left to go. Uh, what we've got to do now is bring the top half of the case over. And we've got to connect the keyboard and the power switch. Oh yeah, one more thing we can do now, we can actually fit the chassis fan that come with the case. And we can fit this into position. And we've got to find where the power supply is to the chassis fan. Um, 
and there it is. So we've got it there down there you can see chassis fan one um, and we can bring the this wire in underneath for cable management and I'll tuck that underneath the hard drive cradle and we'll plug that in. Now this system doesn't really need a chassis fan but it doesn't hurt to have a bit of airflow going through it but what we might have to do is slow it down in the BIOS because it's probably going to go full pelt and it's going to be noisy so we want to slow that down so it's so it's not too noisy okay so the next thing we're going to do is bring the top half of the case over and join the uh, the USB 2 keyboard and the power switch and the LED switch okay so the next thing we're going to do is do a little bit of cable management to the cables that come from the uh, power switch and LED light and the keyboard power supply so what we need to do to start with is um, <coughs> we've got four cable ties left and a couple of cable mounts so we want to use um, two cable ties I think let's work this out we want two cable ties <coughs> on the um, cables from the power switch and LED light uh, to try and force them into one cable as opposed to four different cables uh, again making them tidy so they're not all um, going everywhere and snip these off notice I've done that the, there's four fold uh, sorry three folds one two three from where the cable was wrapped up I've done the two outer folds <coughs> because the middle fold won't be won't be needed uh, I don't think right so what we need to do <coughs> I think there would be a really good position for one of these cable mounts cable tie mounts so again peel the green backing off uh, we put a cable tie through before we actually fit it and then we just want to keep it as square as we can really uh, put that down and then we want to put all the cables through so this is around about where the fan is on the bottom part you can see the top half of the fan house in there and we just want to put this in like this tighten it up and snip that off <coughs> and uh, you can see then so that all the cables are going to come from this position because the motherboard is around about there so we're bypassing the motherboard um, and they're quite neat and tidy so now we're ready to put the top half of the case to the bottom half of the case and plug these cables in okay so we've got the um, case ready the top half is ready we've just got to connect uh, the USB uh, keyboard so again we note the USB to no pin position which is here so if I rotate that round to the right position so it's on this side here and the no pin position is uh, here's the USB pinouts here the USB to pinouts um, so we've got one pin two pin three pin four pin and then the no pin position is there so we've got to bring that down uh, into the no pin position like that so as you're looking at both USBs that's the card reader USB here and the keyboard USB uh, note the red position of the red cable which is on uh, the side nearest the rear IO shield on both on both plugs so that's that so that was very easy wasn't it now comes the more difficult bit and that is the uh, um, the power LED and the power and the power switch. So for this, uh, here are the pinouts here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five pinouts on the uh, on the, the the pinouts closest to me. So on the outside edge, closest to the end of the uh, Mini iChips motherboard. And I'm just looking at the. Um, instruction manual to tell me whereabouts they are okay <clears throat> I've just looked 
So uh, it's the back uh, pin outs that we need, the rear pin outs, the pin outs that would be closest to, to the rear I.O. shield. So the first pin out is the power LED. Um, so it's the live, the, the plus one, which is here. So <coughs> this is the two single separate pins, plugs. So we need, it says minus P LED and plus P LED. So we need the plus P LED to go into that position. So you can see that there. And then we need the minus P LED to go next to it onto the right hand side and that leaves us with two pins left <coughs> excuse me so um, now we have the power switch and I'm just looking for the, the right way around so the ground needs to go to the last pin so the way to find out what's positive and what's um, negative on here um, we've got an embossed arrow on the back I don't know if you can see that, I'll try and zoom in on that. Um, and the bossed arrow indicates the positive, the plus. So if we turn this around, the arrow now is on this side. So we know if we plug that in, we've got the ground. Um, just taking one more look, yeah. So we plug that in. So that's everything put together now, everything in place. So the next thing I'm going to do is take a photograph so that I can show you a close-up especially of the um, LED and the power switch outputs because they're the most awkward ones and then I'll just take a photograph of the um, USBs from two positions okay so the next thing to do is bring the top over. Now I better say this before I carry on. Um, note the um, the positions of the screws that screw the cases together. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. When we bring this over, we do not want any of these cables to rest over um, one of these holes because if that happens, when you put your screw in to screw it up you're going to go and screw straight through one of the wires and we don't want that to happen um, so I know that the pins are, the cables are out of the way so now what we have to do is turn it around and work it so that it slides down onto the rear I.O. Um, metal shield and then clip it together and then we bring over our bag that come with the case and then we put this upside down on it and then we've got to put the six screws back in. One, two, three, four, five, six. And um, do these up. Okay, so we've built the MyVic20. Uh, everything's installed, everything's working okay. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is power it up and um, without putting a USB flash drive in with windows on it we're going to power it up and go into the BIOS and turn that fan down. So what we're going to do is, oh, by the way, sometimes when you plug in the power depending on the, the, the motherboard we might get the caps lock light, light up. Um, it's just one of those things, uh, that's what it does. So when the power's plugged in that caps lock, uh, caps lock light will light up and so here we go we're powering it up now so <clears throat> I just want to show you what to do in the BIOS to slow that fan down before we actually uh, go on to the uh, installation so we got it we want to go into HW monitor and then we've got CPU fan settings and it's set to full speed so we want to um, go on to um, full speed down here on the second option um, where it says chassis fan settings um, we want to go manual and then underneath it will say what level so there we go it's on level 1 so full speed will be level 9 I'm going to stick it on level 1 uh, and then before I save this I've now got my flash drive I'm going to plug that in the back in 
onto a USB 3 connection so it's uh, a quicker install. Uh, and then I'm going to press the FN button, hold it down and press F10. That comes up with save configuration changes and exit setup. We want to go yes and it's already highlighted so I'll just press return or enter, whatever you want to call it. So now it's going to reboot and it's going to boot into the Windows, uh, in this instance it's a Windows 11 installer. Um, I think it might be Windows 10. I can't remember what's on the stick but I think it's Windows 11 so we'll just see. But this should be uh, okay for Windows 11. And we know it's gone straight onto the stick because we can actually see the um, the spinning emblem there, you know, the dots spinning around, so we know it's Windows. So this is a US uh, keyboard layout, so um, we want to stick it for that. But the uh, for me, we're in the United Kingdom, so we've got to click uh, United Kingdom for the time and currency format. But the language to install, we're leaving it at... Um, uh, English United States for the keyboard method. If I can find. Install now, so it should just um, <coughs> come up with the installer and she should start installing soon. Installing Windows is a doddle. Um, now this, if you don't have the Windows key, if you've got the Windows key, you can enter it now. But if you don't, you can you can select. I don't have product key, uh, which I'm going to select, uh, and then it will take you ahead. So yes, it is Windows 11. So uh, for this uh, install, we're going to go uh, Windows 11 Pro next. So this is accepting the terms. Next. Uh, so we don't want an upgrade. We want to a custom install. So we've got to select the bottom um, box. <coughs> and then we're selecting the hard drive that we installed, whether that's a mechanical hard drive that you've installed, like a two terabyte. For, for us, we've only got a 250 gigabyte hard drive. So we're going to select that, where it's already selected, and then we're going to select new for new partition. And it's going to come up with a default size, and that is set perfect for this hard drive. So we click apply, um, and then it'll come up with another window, just click OK. So now it's going to format a partition for Windows to be installed on. This is going to take a, a few seconds to do that. There we go. So uh, then we've got to select... Um, the primary partition, which is partition 4, uh, for Windows to be installed on, and then we click Next, and the installation begins. Uh, so this is going to take a few minutes, so we'll speed through this, uh, until we get the next um, pop-up window asking for something else. It's installed, and it's just rebooting now, so um, expect that to happen, it normally ha happens during a Windows install. Incidentally, um, installing Linux would be a similar process. It's very, very easy to install Linux now. It never used to be years ago. You had to know what you're doing to, to, to install Linux, but uh, for the last 15 years, it's been a doddle. Okay, so it's booted back up again, and the next screen is: Is this the right country or region? So this is saying United States, but we're in the United Kingdom, so I'm going to select that. Uh, and then it's selecting the keyboard. Is this the right keyboard? And it's saying US, so yes it is. Um, we don't want to add a second keyboard, so skip that. Um, I am connected to the internet. I haven't used the Wi-Fi. I'm connected for an Ethernet cable. So now it's checking for updates, so that it can store the updates as it's, as it's carrying on the installation. Okay, now it's asking... How would we like this set up uh, to set up on this device? Uh, personal use or set up for uh, work or school? Uh, we're going to go for personal use. Um, and we want to, um, we don't want, for this particular build because it's for someone else, 
I'm not going to select uh, sign in through um, my Microsoft account. I'm going to uh, select um, sign in options. Uh, and what we want to select is offline account. And then that's saying, are you sure? You know, it'd be better if you sign in with a Microsoft account. I'm sure, I don't want a Microsoft account, I just said that, so skip for now. Uh, and then we're going to enter a name. I'm just going to go Vic and password. So there we have it. So we've got the Vic 20, it's installed, we've installed Windows 11. Uh, just, there's just one more thing to do. During the installation process, there's been a few drivers that Windows couldn't install. So they're uh, ASRock drivers or Intel drivers that Windows 11 didn't have. Maybe if it was Windows 10, they would have installed. It would have installed all the drivers. Um, so this is where uh, it doesn't sound so good when I said we don't need an optical drive. So uh, those of you that have put an optical drive in here, then you can just install this uh, DVD, uh, which has got all the drivers on it. You can install it, and then you can go from there and install everything. Uh, however, we haven't got that option because we haven't got the optical drive in. Don't worry, you don't need it. Um, because we can go onto the website and download everything that would have been on this install disk. So let's do that now. I happen to have the website already here. All I did was uh, I googled um, uh, ASRock uh, J5040 hyphen ITX and up, I think it was the second option down. So then what you do is so it, you come you come to this page and we want support and then we want download and so this is all the download so this is all the uh, options we've got now forget the bottom four we don't need any of them all we need uh, sorry the bottom five because we don't even need the motherboard utility uh, because that's just for controlling the, 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 the speed of it so we don't need one two three four we don't need the bottom five forget them so we need uh, from uh, uh, the six one up, so one, two, three, four, five, the six one up. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the global for download and I'm just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, sorry, seven, eight, nine. So I'm downloading nine uh, 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 drivers basically. Some of the drivers we don't need, but I don't know which ones we do, which ones we don't. So if we don't, if we download all of them, apart from the bottom uh, five that I mentioned, uh, it, it just solves the problem. So then what we're going to do, once these are downloaded, is they're in a zipped file format, meaning they're compressed. So we extract them, which basically means we're going to drag the extracted folder onto the desktop. So we'll put all nine onto the desktop. And from there, we can install the drivers. It's quite a simple process. Okay, so we don't need this page anymore, so we can get rid of that. Uh, so now what we do is we go to the downloads. <coughs> and we'll start from the top. And what we're going to do is we're going to double click on it, which then opens the compressed uh, file up to, to show you a, a folder. And then we're just going to drag that across onto the desktop. Then we can go back and get to the second one and again drag that across to the desktop desktop and then we'll go back third one double click drag that across to the desktop and we just do this for all of them until they're all onto the desktop so what we're going to do now is we're going to go uh, to the start menu and we're going to go settings and then because I don't know where it is now uh, I'm just going to type in device manager lost about it, wait a minute. Um, and then there it is there so device manager it comes up straight away uh, now I have all the drivers installed because I've did it just a minute ago. Once I've done it, I can't I can't uninstall them. But what you'll find is you'll have a drop you'll have um, uh, a drop down. It'll be highlighted in red, and you'll and it, you'll drop it down, and it won't know what the drivers are. So what you do is, for instance, if this was it, you right click and you click update driver, 
And now, what you want to do now, after you after you click update driver, you want to browse my computer for the drivers, and then you want to browse to the desktop, which is there, and then click OK. So that means what it's going to do is it's going to search the desktop for the for the correct driver, which will be in any one of these folders. So you do that process. I'm going to come out of there because there's no point because I've already got it all. Um, but you do that process for each one. Now I've, I've already done it just a minute ago so I know it works. Um, but you do that process for each one where it's missing the, the drivers. And one by one it will install all these drivers. Now at the end of installing some of the drivers it will, it will ask you to reboot. I wouldn't do that. I'd just carry on installing the other drivers until they're all installed then reboot at the end. Otherwise you'll be re rebooting pretty much every time. But as you can see here, I've just um, completed this method and I've rebooted and all the drivers are installed on there. We haven't got any errors. So that means that Windows 11 is installed, fully installed, and all the drivers are installed. So now everything will work to its optimum settings, uh, which is what we want. Uh, so I thought I'd go through that extra bit. So. Um, it's all right installing Windows 10 or Windows, Windows 11, but when you go on to the device manager and you find out that some of these are highlighted in red or it's got uh, uh, some sort of squiggly line next to it saying that there's an issue with that driver, um, I thought it worth going over this and showing you how to install the missing drivers that Windows didn't do during the installation process. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Uh, to show you how to build a silent retro VIC-20. So, like I said earlier at the beginning, um, this won't be able to do AAA games. It'll be able to do everything else, um, with the exception maybe of uh, um, uh, video editing, uh, things that are, uh, that are stressful. It will still be able to do it, but it will take it, uh, a lot longer to be able to do things like that, because really you need a dedicated graphics card. Uh, to be able to do stressful things like that. But everything else, including older games, so anything that's 10 years old, eight, say 8 years old and older, uh, this should be able to play it quite easily. But uh, anything newer than that, then this won't be able to do it. But when it comes to emulation, uh, ETA Prime, uh, I'll put a link to the video below, he actually did an install with, uh, with uh, My64 with this J5040 ITX uh, motherboard. He didn't go as in depth as what I did about installing everything, uh, but what he did do is show you all of the uh, the games that will play, uh, all of the retro uh, games. So all the systems he was playing Wii games, he was playing Nintendo 64, I think, uh, and it will certainly do all of that. So there's a lot of stuff that you can actually play on this. If you wanted to go down the emulation route, this is much faster than a Raspberry Pi 4. So this is several times faster than a Raspberry Pi 4. This is running at 3, I think, boosting at 3.2 gigahertz, something like that. So it's a really good system, and it's silent, super silent, like a Raspberry Pi 4 would be. So it's a really good system. I'd, I'd recommend, if you're into... Um, if, uh, if you're watching this video and you actually haven't actually bought one of these yet and you're thinking of doing it, this is a very good system to get to start off with. Very easy to build as you can see from the, uh, the tutorial. A very simple system to put, to put together. It's quite powerful uh, and the, the great thing about it is it's silent. Um, but anyway, so getting back, if you like what you see, if you like this video, uh, then please subscribe. We've got over 500 subscribers at the moment as of October uh, 2021. Um, we're looking to get to a thousand subscribers. Uh, so please subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you know when we bring out another video. Uh, but thank you for watching. Thank you for purchasing one of these if you've done that. And good luck in your builds. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye.